We just, uh, again, want to, uh, first of all, say how proud I am of my team. Um, second, I want to say how proud I am of our fans today, 9,500, I think, plus. Um, what an incredible atmosphere for everyone across the country to see. And, again, just makes this place so special. Um, I thought our fans were great. I thought we were really good for them early. Uh, we kind of put them to sleep late, but, uh, you know, I was really proud of how we jumped out early, 30-6 to six in the first quarter, attacking, making shots, and, and defending. And, uh, um, you know, we, uh, we had 24 assists on 31 baskets, and that's, that's unusual for us. We're, we're trip, typically uh, uh, a little different than that. And uh, n not that it's bad when we're not like that way, but it's just unusual. So, um, Really thought we shared the ball. Thought Jordan had some outstanding passes. She ended up with uh, eight assists, um, and uh, she had a couple of those turnovers. She knows I don't like, but uh, you know, just made some really good decisions with the ball off her off the bounce. And that's the old point guard and her coming out. But uh, was proud of our kids for the way they came out, and and really, I thought played in the first ten minutes and kind of set the tone for the whole game. And so we're. Uh, Giving God the glory for six and one, and uh, almost to the halfway point of, of conference. So um, we'll move on to the next one. We'll start with Steve. Jess, you uh, you had the jumper working early. What was it that made that so successful for you? Why did you think that was going to be a good shot for you? Um, I don't know because sometimes I can easily just drop step, but I like that shot and I get it a lot, so I take it. <laughs> Zaria got a chance to start tonight and made the most of your minutes. Kind of, I guess, kind of brought that over from the fourth quarter the other night. Just how well do you feel like you're playing right now when you're getting your opportunities? Um, I definitely think I'm playing pretty well right now. Just getting the confidence um, from them extra minutes that I'm getting on the court, you know, and just my teammates sitting here supporting me and just pushing me every day in <coughs> practice definitely helps too. Joe, coach referenced the 30-point explosion that first quarter. It seemed like they had trouble matching you guys' energy early. Was that a point of emphasis with coach? How did he kind of get you guys ready for that first quarter? Um, we, it was a point of emphasis. We definitely knew we had to come out, you know, with a lot of energy, um, especially from last Monday's game. And then Vanderbilt, we had a um, rough game there as well. So we just knew that we had to, you know, punch first. And, you know, it's, it's a robbery game. so. We won't have a lot of energy for that game. Jess, I, I asked a little bit of this the other day after Vanderbilt, but back-to-back -back games now with 20-plus after that South Carolina game. What did you take away from that ball game that's allowed you to come out the last two ball games and, and compete the way you have? Like I said the um, other day, without an inside game, we can't win seeing from South Carolina. So. I've been working hard on posting up so they can get me the ball easier and finishing. Questions for anyone? Go Aaron. This is just for the entire table, whoever wants to speak. Just were any of you kind of affected about the news that hit nationally of Kobe Bryant's passing and then just being female basketball players, his daughter dying as well today in a helicopter accident who, you know, would have probably – love to be in the position that, you know, so many women get to do when they play basketball in college. Was, was anyone affected by that at all? It's definitely um, heartbreaking. It's a tragedy. Um, we just give our prayers and condolences to Kobe Bryant's family, but we all were, you know, watching the news and listening to it right before the game. So it kind of impacted. It, it definitely did impact us a lot just to hear that news of a legend and then his daughter um, just to see a little mini. So, yeah, we definitely heard about it. Go back to Steve. Coach played most of the fourth quarter with uh, reserve players in. What did you see from them in that final quarter? Yeah, just a lot of things to work on. Uh, didn't think we were exceptionally well, very good defensively. Gave up a lot of drill penetration off the ball screen, which I thought we handled pretty well uh, early on. Um, 
you know, and again, that's something to teach with, and it'll give us uh, some good film to show those uh, young players. Um, but um, it's good to get let them get the experience of playing in front of 10,000, you know, 9,500 people. That's that's a great experience, and uh, you know, I, I know the takeaway from that will be that they'll get better from that. And uh, you know, I thought those kids played really hard, and um, um, but we've just got to be a little bit better. You know, Leah, Leah will see a lot of what she did right and what she did wrong, and that's the first one that jumps off the page for me. Promise, you know, that's probably the most extended minute she had tonight. So it'll give us some good, good teaching material. Vic, I guess kind of a two-parter, but first off, was there any reason you decided to go with Zarya in the in the starting lineup instead of Rakia? And then on the back of that, with the way that Zarya is playing, how what does that do for your team? Is kind of you guys get going into the heart of SEC play? Yeah, you know, it's hard to start Zarya uh, because she's my uh, she's my fix it all. She 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 can come in and play two three. She can play the four, and so when you start that person. And she's been playing so well. Played 28 minutes the other night at Vanderbilt. I mean, it, it, it's hard to, to take that. That role is really important. And um, and so, uh, you know, it's it's a hard decision to make. But, um, you know, she she handled it well today, I thought. And uh, and, and really, you know, should she have five assists today? That's got to be a career high. She had some of those three turnovers oh. that I um, don't particularly care for. But, you know, she did a great job, uh, I thought. And, uh, and again, I'd like to see her being more aggressive offensively. I thought she turned down some opportunities at one-on-one -on -one stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, again, she's, uh, she's that big wing, you know, and, and you get her going now. She's hard to get to. And, and uh, she, she does provide us a little bit of a, a little help rebounding. Uh, Looks like she only had two tonight, but she's been helping us rebound quite a bit. So, um, really proud of proud of her, and uh, you know I got a lot of confidence in Zaria right now, and, and she's really impacting our team. Coach, the difference in the turnovers, you cost 23, only had 11, so I know that uh, difference there had to be pleasing to a certain extent. No question. We had four at halftime, Danny, and uh, which is really good. And, uh, you know, for us, the 11's a little much, but, um, you know, sometimes you get going in a sloppy game and you get sloppy yourself. But uh, uh, certainly forcing 23 turnovers, had 15. I think we forced 15 in the first half. And uh, obviously, when we're doing that and we're able to get out and transition, that's always a, a plus for us. And that's what we like to do. Jordan is so good in transition, just getting out and running. Zaria has been running the floor extremely well, and Aaliyah. So it's always a plus. And, um, you know, that's always an indication, too, of how hard we're playing. You know, we gave up a lot of points the other night on Monday night, and that's very uncharacteristic of us. But, I, you know, when we went back and looked at the film, I think the kids saw why. And so we, we've got to get better. We went back to work. We had two really good workout days, Friday and Saturday. Uh, and um, I think we got better. And I thought the first half showed that tonight. Vic, we've talked about it a bunch the last week or two. But how, with what you guys had, obviously, three games this week, how much closer do you feel like you are to having kind of a set rotation when you, you kind of manage that 11, 12 people each night? Yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, I feel like I'm pretty good with, you know, Zaria being our first kind of 3-4 off the bench. Um, but, you know, we up to game time today, we, we'd have probably had a lineup out there and you'd have gone, now what? You know, but it's just, uh, you know, and I kind of like it. I like the kids competing in practice, knowing that, hey, nothing's set in stone. You want to encourage those young kids that maybe aren't playing as much as they thought they might or, or should, or maybe they did in the summer, you want to encourage them, look, don't slot yourself. Don't put yourself in a position where you think, well, this is where I am and this is where I'm going to stay. you got to keep working, man. If you're not working every day and trying to get better, um, you're missing the boat. Because if you're paying attention, I mean, it's it's pretty much by feel for right now. And, and who's been doing well in practice? And so... Um, you know, I think that's how Zaria got her opportunity. And she wasn't playing that great earlier in the year, but she put in the time and been doing some good things in practice. And then she's been given some opportunities during ball games, and she's come through. 
So that's the, the point I'm trying to hammer home with our team right now is just keep working. Um, you know, it's been a kind of a revolving door, so to speak, at certain positions. And it's who's hot and who's not. Really quickly, uh, Joe, I'm just wondering if wearing 24 has anything to do with Kobe? Um, <clears throat> no, it doesn't. Uh, I just didn't want to wear 23 because my name is Jordan. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to And then for you, Vic, uh, Coach Yo had a pretty uh, emotional quote about Kobe's death. And uh, just as someone who's been a, an ambassador for basketball, and as specifically women's basketball, and um, like Aaron said, him having a daughter who, who played. Um, just, just how did the news hit you? And uh, I mean, what, what were you feeling when, when you read that? Well, I think I heard it um, as I was headed out the door to go home from shoot around. And you know, your first thing is you're just, you're just in shock. I mean, you, you can't believe someone that young, number one. I mean, the guy probably could still be playing if he really wanted to. Um, I didn't know about his daughter being with him until it was mentioned in here. In, in, Any time, and, and I, t I spoke to my team about this in the pregame, and my message is, and I'll say this in the room to everybody, life is fleeting, y'all. You, you, you just can't take things for granted in today's, you know, today's world and with life. We're, we're only guaranteed right now, today. We're not guaranteed tomorrow, and, you know, there's some, it seems like there's something like this that happens, and it, it to me it just really grabs you and grounds you and brings you back down to now and what's important and appreciating what you have when you have it right now. For Kobe, for for just think back to his career. I mean, you're talking about one of the all-time great players, and he's got a daughter. I mean, and she's gonna play. It it. it it's such a tragedy, um, and it hits on so many fronts. That's a family. That's just, they're not here anymore, like that. I mean, you woke up this morning, and now you have that. And, and that's what I try to tell my kids all the time. Look, look, I've been through that with Logan. You know, I've been through in one blink, and you're, this is my, my son's on life support. I mean, until you go through that, but that was my message to the team is, man, you're young and you just, you're so carefree and you just, you think you're going to live forever and everything's going to, but things can change like that. And it, it is, it is such a tragedy. It's uh, for somebody that did so much for our game, both as a player and ambassador, he's a great dad. You know, I've, I've seen him and her together many times at games and, um, yeah, I don't know the full story, so I don't know what they were doing, where they were, but they were together. That means something. I mean, you got to give that 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 carries that they were together. Um, as tragic as it is, and uh, again, you know, we we think of life here, y'all. They're 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 living. They're they're to me, we're all gonna die, y'all. That's what the preacher said this morning. We're all going to die. They're living, in my mind, they're, they're living their life now uh, in, in what they'll never die again, in my mind. And so it's, <clears throat> it's hard. I don't, I don't have the – all I have is the words I told my team before we took the floor, which is, man, embrace the day. Embrace the moment. Don't take anything for granted. And, uh, you know, appreciate the things you have. Because, man, you just never know when you get that phone call. Anything else? Thank y'all. Praise the Lord and go dogs.